Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology! And just really quickly you guys, thank you so much! Holy cow! Like the excitement about our wonderful little rainforest biome that we've been working on and all of the different biodomes that we can add in has been completely off the charts. I just cannot believe how excited all of you guys are to be able to share some research into ecology and to be able to experiment with our little biodome and to talk animals and to talk poop and to talk mushrooms and to talk like prey predator balances it makes my little pixel biologist heart so happy that you guys are actually interested in the science behind all of these things too so i'm very very excited to be back for more taito ecology you guys have been loud and clear in very kind ways in the comments so of course i'm going to try to bring more of it in and i haven't checked on fernville for a little while so i'm a little bit nervous so we're going to dive in and we're gonna see how Fernville has been doing and we haven't been there for about three months and I have no idea if everything's alive or dead but whatever the case uh, I think today we'll kind of check in on them maybe add some things in and then we're gonna get started on I think our grasslands biome today so that's one of my big goals oh my gosh is everything dead or not I have no this is gonna be a little bit okay deep breaths deep breaths all right sweeping detritus okay detritus yep 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 all right, 12 weeks, low health. We've earned some income. Is everybody around? Is it just skulls again? Oh, oh look at this, the what and the bees. There's something seedy about these fruits because fruits have seeds, yes! So apparently we even have earned another achievement. Everything is not only not dead, it looks like some of the uh, agouti populations are going down though, so we need to definitely add to that. Oh, but there's plenty of them here. Hey, are you guys gonna have babies? These guys are gonna have babies in like 41 days, which is really exciting. Well, let's slow it down for just a second. These guys have two juveniles! There's babies somewhere! Where are your babies? I wanna see your babies. <gasps> you guys! It's babies! It's babies! This is good! If our populations, what's this? Well, this is not a baby. This is a dead one. <laughs> oh my gosh, and this is a dead one too. Well, the good news is our populations seem to be doing well enough that we're able to get some babies. And that is a very, very good thing because that means that our ocelots are not overeating these guys. And thank you guys for the advice. So it seems like although having a lot of leaves... <gasps> Did they just eat that? No, my leaves are just disappearing. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Although having a lot of the plants and the leaves is super, super important in order to make sure that there's enough uh, for everybody to eat... The leaves are actually not the thing that these guys will eat the most. They really, really prefer eating all of the fruits. So let's add in a whole bunch of fruit trees. Let's see. So what's the thing we have? I think we have all of the plants now. What offers us the most fruit? It looks like it may be the acacia and the flame trees and the pineapple and the papaya. Let's go with some papaya. We'll put down some papaya trees. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. Oh, look at those big, beautiful papaya. They're a little bit bigger than I remember too. There. I wonder why the plants are being so wonky donkey about showing up. We'll figure that out. There have been some updates to the game, so who knows? Who knows what's been added in? Maybe I need to change. Let me check really quickly. Graphics. Um, no, 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 no. We need ultra. Yeah. Hi. We can go. Yeah. Boom. There we go, you guys. <laughs> go all the way, all the way. I know my computer can handle it. <gasps> Look how green it is. Oh my gosh. That's much better. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So there's a lesson for you guys in how to make everything look very pretty. Because I know I have a computer that's good enough to handle it. So come on, pineapple. Come on. So for our population where there's just like one little guy, he's not really doing well. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to bounce back. I don't know if he's just going to like naturally reproduce and be okay or not. So I guess the best we can do is just try to fill in a lot of fruit and take care of that little guy. But we have some other species. We have the ocelots. 19 days. <gasps> Let's stick around here and see if we can wait and find some ocelot babies. That would be so exciting. All right. Oh, no, we did lose a group of the other little goatee guys. Dang it. All right. So that probably happened because we didn't have enough fruit. So thank you guys for telling me about that. These guys, the Kodamondis, are doing okay. I want to see a lot more. Yeah, their hunger is kind of high. So I want to see a lot more over here. So we probably need to add in a lot more plants. So can we get down here? Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi. Let me add in some plants like right here for all of you. Oh, look at that. <gasps> the plants look different. 
Oh my goodness, I get it, I get it. So it goes into different modes. I can't believe I've never noticed this before. Oh, look, there's the fruit right there. Okay, so you start off like in stasis, flowering, and then fruiting, and then it goes back into stasis. I get it, because it'll kind of go through a cycle. And then these guys will come over, and they will eat some of the uh, papaya. Wow, see, we're starting to pull it off. All right, and then pollination. After stasis, it'll enter pollination. See, I'm starting to figure out some of the key mechanics of the game. It just took me a little while. So you will get, it's not like you get instant results as soon as you put down um, whatever plants you're going for. You do have to kind of build it up. All right, well, let's go ahead and add in more energy because we have plenty of the money to be able to do that. So we'll put in some papaya and then let's add in more pineapple. And then what do these guys eat again? Because they look like they're getting a little hungry. All right, so the Kotamundi, and if I pronounce these things wrong, I apologize. I'll try to figure out how to do that. Uh, they are not picky eaters. They are omnivores who will eat insects, small animals, fish, fruits, leaves, nuts, roots, and even carrion. And many large predators, such as large snakes and jaguars, will eat them. Their noses are long and flexible. That's right, looking for those tiny insects. So, hmm... Hmm, social life, dineural. So they spend most of their day forging for food. <gasps> Look at my little tiny pineapple! It's blooming! You guys, I have blooming pineapple! Oh, that's so cute! Oh my goodness, I'm so happy. Alright, what? What? Why are my yellow footed horses? Why do they have low health? Let's see, I have a population over here. Is that them? Oh no, their hunger is really high. Where are you, my little friend? Okay, so we need to feed this little guy like immediately but I need to find him oh there you are are you just really slow all right so this is going to be one of our to do let's see herbivores roots leaves berries slow moving insects so let's add in some more let's see maybe some pineapple hi buddy maybe some papaya I, I guess it could fall from the tree and you could eat it um let's see strangler fig does add in some stuff but let's try the Amazon flame tree maybe we need to feed our tortoise. <laughs> oh dear. And I am trying to make sure we have enough fruit. So I think we need enough fruit to feed the tortoise more than anything. Oh, look at him. Look at him. <gasps> There's a tortoise baby. When did that happen? So he's, he's chowing down. The tortoise baby just died? What? What? I was just looking at you. And then you're dead? It's a dead tortoise. Did they not have enough pineapple? He just starved before our eyes. That is tragic. Okay, let's get more pineapple added in. What are we doing here? Where's my pineapple? I guess another flame fruit tree. Yeah, this looks like it's nice and low. So pollination. And then let's see. This guy passed out. I'm so sorry, little one. Oh, you're so hungry. Oh, gosh. I thought he would come over and maybe eat more of these earthworms. But it seems like he mostly prefers the fruit. So let's add in a whole little section right down here. Where we're just going to have tons of fruit. And then hopefully that will make it a positive area for the tortoise. Though I have been kind of wondering what may eat the tortoise. Like who is going to prey on the tortoise? Because of their tough heavy shells, tortoises have few predators. Only a few animals like the jaguar and ocelot are able to crunch through their shells to get out the tortoise meat. Baby tortoises are not so well protected and fall prey to many carnivores because of their softer shells. So hmm, that may be, that may be part of the problem there. Alright, so this guy's feeling a little bit better, and he's chowing down right now. See, he's chowing down on all the pineapple, so we just need to have- <laughs> He fell asleep on the pineapple. So yeah, we just needed a little bit, a little bit more pineapple there, and then he's, he's doing fine. Alright, I think that- I can't believe I lost a little tortoise, phooey. Yeah, I think that they're doing okay. I think I have another population of tortoises somewhere. But that may have been my first population. So we'll see. We'll see. And yes, we will start filling in this area too. It's really amazing how big these biodomes start getting. So what should we start filling in over here? Maybe we don't really have our armadillo insectivore just yet. And how are ocelots doing? Because it feels like the bigger and bigger the stack you make, the more you're kind of worried that the whole pile is going to fall down as you start adding to things. Ah, I know I said we would make a grasslands today, but I kind of want to stick around and see if the ocelots have babies. They're doing great. Their hunger is super high. I think they're going to be fine. So let's focus on expansion then. Maybe, and maybe some more mushrooms. Because we need to add in a lot of decomposers. 
I have noticed you have to add in a ton of them in order to keep everything in check. So why don't we add in enough plants over here that we can put in maybe an armadillo and some frogs. And I kind of want to move <gasps> maybe a tapir. Oh, I kind of want a tapir today. Let's unlock the tapir. All right, my friend, what would I need for you? Let's see if I can figure that out. Um, let's see if I come over here, biodex, and then tapir, tapir, tapir. Are you here, little tapir? Uh, this is all of them. There we go. All right. They are herbivores who graze on leaves, roots, and fruits throughout the day. And they fall prey to large carnivores such as jaguars and crocodiles. When it eats a fruit, the fruit seeds usually go through the whole digestive process without being damaged. Uh, tapirs are important seed dispersing animals for this reason. Without them, many plants would be unable to reproduce. Now that's an interesting thought, and I know that thought. And actually, there's even species of plants that will not germinate. They are incapable of germinating until after they have gone through the digestive system of an animal. Which sounds pretty amazing, but it is true. And you'll actually run into a lot of those kinds of plants, um, especially in Asia too. There's a few trees I think have to go through the gut system of an elephant or a large uh, bovine before they're actually able to start blooming. So, or germinating, which means when the seed first starts growing into a tree. So that's kind of a pretty dependent relationship if you're going to be like, no, I'm not going to be able to grow at all until after I go through that whole system. So why would you, as a seed, think that it's beneficial for you to go through the digestive tract of an elephant? Oh, yay, we just got some weekly income. Yay! Plant health is doing okay. Sweet. So let's look at everybody while I tell you guys about this. So why would you as a seed, want to go through the digestive tract of an elephant before you pop out the other side and start becoming a tree. Well, there's two reasons for that. One reason is that the elephant's probably going to try to eat you regardless. And so if you have this really, really tough exterior like shell so that as you go through the digestive system and you're bouncing around in those digestive juices inside of the elephant's uh, digestive tract. <laughs> oh, there's one of the ocelots. Have babies soon. Oh, oh, what's going to go down here? Oh, oh, it died. That's what went down. Well, hang in there, little guy. You ran into a predator. I'm sorry. There's only so much I can do. She's getting ready to hopefully have some babies. But if you are uh, back to the seed that's in the digestive tract of the elephant, if you are the seed in the digestive tract and you have a really, really, really thick shell, then you're able to make it through the entire elephant's digestive tract without being digested and turning into just food for the elephant. So you can pop out the other side and be okay. So a lot of the seeds will start developing that thick shell. And the trade-off is if the elephant doesn't eat the seed, then it's too thick then they can't germinate without having gone through the digestive juices of the elephant and wearing away some of the exterior of the shell now the other perk of being able to be pooped out by elephants is that you land in that poop and that's a lot of nutrients that you can start off with as a tree so that's very helpful if you're a little seed if you just land in that pile with everything else yeah science isn't always very very not gross guys sorry about that i mean we talk about pee here and then we end up talking about elephant poop piles but it's true because then the seed lands into that pile and it has a really great bed of nutrients to start growing in so there's a couple perks to it and it's not like again these are conscious choices it's just things that the plants have kind of evolved over time because like I said the, the elephant's going to eat them regardless all right nine days so the plant might as well take the gamble of growing a thicker shell and see if that works out no a whole group of them died oh I must have had another group over here and the last one just got eaten oh that's so sad all right how are these guys doing well, we've got like two juveniles. I think I need to add in more more pineapples for these guys. And then you know what? Let's try putting a not a tapir, even though we just got those guys. Let's try putting in an armadillo over here. Because I think I have lots of ants. So I think Mr. Armadillo might appreciate that. And we might need to add in more food uh, for, let's see, how's this frog population doing? No, not new frog population, this frog population. Yeah, see, these guys aren't doing well enough either. Their hunger is great, but I think that they're not getting, <laughs> they're not getting a chance to survive because there's so many uh, things getting eaten by our ocelots. Ah, the frogs just died. I told you guys, just as I added in the frogs, I think the ocelots did it. The ocelots ate the very last frog just as I added new frogs in. Oh, man, their appetite is going up. And if they're about to have babies, I guess we need to, like, pile on the prey items. 
So let's add in some armadillos over here, I guess. I don't know if armadillos would be very easy to eat, though. I didn't imagine that the Codamundis would be easy to eat either, but apparently. All right, maybe a tapir at the back? Hmm. I think we need another population or so of these guys who are absolutely adorable. Ah, they're so cute. And they're getting eaten, like, left and right. All right, eight days left until we should have some reproduction going on the ocelots. So, yeah, ocelots, I think I need to just start adding in tons and tons more pineapple and more fruit trees because I need, let's see, come on, uh, pineapple, get down here. Because I need to feed these little guys and I need more prey items. Come on, pineapple, there you go. And I need more prey items. Look at them fall from the sky for my ocelots because my ocelots are eating everything. All right, have some papaya. Enjoy, more pineapple if I can find a spot for it somewhere over here. Oh, 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 no. Uh, web over here. Okay, you might have to roam a little bit further for the pineapple. Sorry, guys. Uh, maybe a strangler fig. Can I fit it over here? Uh, maybe. Let me back up a little bit. Strangler fig, strangler fig. Um, let's see. Maybe right there. All right, maybe an acacia palm. We'll have to see. And there it is. All right, I can add in another one right there. And then maybe some flame trees, some little flame trees. Desperately trying to add in enough that we can keep everybody fed and definitely need to start getting in more mushrooms, too So let's go ahead buy another energy pack because that's what that money is for might as well use it for something All right flame trees And then I'm gonna have to add in more decomposers over here I think because I don't think I have enough to make sure that everybody's everybody's population stays stable There's gonna be too much poop All right but yeah, it's really fun to mess with it and to see how it lines up with like my my knowledge of real life ecosystems because that is one of the things I would love to study the most is the balance uh, between ecosystems. When I go and finally finish up my biology degree one day in the long, long future after the sidetrack into being a YouTuber maybe has a little bit of breathing room in it so I can go finish my studies. I would love to finish up the last year of my degree focusing primarily on ecology because I love seeing how the puzzle pieces of everything come together fit. So this is awesome. Look at all this greenery. This is awesome. All right. Well, we still have quite a while before we really need to worry about the ocelots having babies. So let's get back over here and let's start adding in more trees. Maybe we'll get down on this level again. All right, and orchids too. Orchids would be great. Oh, we need to add in some pollinators over here. So let's get some blue morphos because we're going to need pollinators. We should probably have in some moths because why not? And then let's make sure we have plenty of decomposers. So some nice little earthworms to keep things moving for these pineapples. Maybe some millipedes over here. Definitely need to get more mushrooms in. There we go. Yeah, we have tons of room for more energy. So, yeah, the mushrooms, a lot of people were like, you only need, like, two mushrooms. No, we needed a lot more than that. Because the more mushrooms we were putting down, the better things have done. All right, so maybe some more orchids. Now, the orchids are pretty good for leaves. Um, let's pop over here. They go from stasis to flowering. And let's see. Popular decorative flowers. Um, some animals will eat orchid stems, flowers, and roots. And pollinators are especially fond of the flower's sweet nectar. So we've been having a good time with our pollinators so far. Yay! Got more money. And I don't think we need to worry too much about our pollinators' health. But I am concerned about everybody else. Because I want to make sure that we keep enough food for everyone. Hi, little Kodamondi. How are you doing? He's like, I'm really hungry and I want to eat this pineapple. Okay, hang in there. I'll get you some more fruit trees over here, too. So fruit trees, fruit trees, fruit trees. These guys eat a lot. And the more that we start adding in and the more babies they have, the more food we have to provide for everybody. Oh, it's so pretty. Look, here's another one. He's coming to eat more of the pineapple. All right, there you go, buddy. You should have plenty of pineapple over here. Here, I'll get another fruit tree. There we go. All right, maybe we should start working our way over. And I'll just, like, leave a trail of fruit trees behind me as we go. There's enough mushrooms that hopefully it'll be able to clean up. There we go. Fruit tree. What's another one I could put down here? Maybe a, a few papayas. So we'll, I'll start sprinkling papaya trees behind me as we work our way over here. And we check in once again on our ocelots. Three days until reproduction. So, oh gracious, there's one ocelot. Uh, here's an, a frog. Here's an armadillo. <laughs> so we have quite the pile. We've got quite the little pile over here. 
Oh gosh, and there's a frog and an armadillo. That's adorable. Okay, so they're all hopping around doing their own thing. Yeah, I guess we'll have to do the grasslands next time because they're oh there there went the armadillo. <laughs> and there's just a whole bunch of frogs hopping past. Well, the cycle of life, my friends. Goodness. Yeah, this is why I really need to like ramp up just how many prey items we've got over here. I guess uh, armadillo population, how you doing? Sorry about that. Okay, armadillo population's doing okay over there. And doing okay over here. And we'll just have to see how the agotis do. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I really need to add in more prey items, I guess. Because, no, maybe not. Maybe it's just the balance. If they're too close to the ocelot territory, maybe that's just a natural thing to happen. So, hmm. Have to think about that. Maybe put some new frogs in here. All right, there go the frogs. Ocelots, two days still. Ah, I keep thinking they're going to have their babies like any second. I'm on pins and needles. I want to see the ocelot babies. All right, let's put down some papaya trees. Very beautiful, very beautiful. All right, there you go. And then, what about now? Nope. <laughs> I don't even know what I would see if I did, like, find ocelot babies. All right, let's go ahead and get more energy. And then we can focus on, like, maybe adding in some papaya. Adding in another palm tree over here. I wonder if it would help everybody if we bought this area. Maybe it would. All right, maybe we should. Maybe I should. All right, let's see. Let's come over here. Is this the zone? Oh, you have to go around in a big circle. Okay, well, we're just going to have to wait to unlock that zone then. All right. Are you going to have babies? You're you're one year, 44 weeks old, and a little bit hungry. One day until reproduction. There's what remains of something. Whoops. There's what remains of a, <laughs> one of those guys. <laughs> he is now dead. They eat so many of them. Hungry, hungry ocelots. Where is my other ocelot? There's frogs everywhere, at least. Ah, there you are. You're on the move. Are you gonna have a baby? Or is the baby just gonna, like, pop out from over here? Ocelot baby? One day until reproduction. Any second now, we'll get some ocelot babies. We have to have the forest absolutely hopping full of prey items. Yeah, this, this hardly has anybody over here. Everybody is just kind of surviving on the edges of the ocelot territory. Can't really blame them. Maybe if we put in more fruit, then they'll be able to keep eating and having babies and the population will kind of balance itself out. All right, let's add in more. <gasps> you guys! Two new ocelot kittens! Oh my goodness! They were just born! They just popped into the world. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. And they've got some, they've already got some food waiting for them. So hopefully that'll go well. Hi, little one. Oh, are you gonna go make your first kill? Where are we going here? Are you gonna go? Oh my gosh, it's so tiny. So that is how we will end up with more ocelots and other creatures. So when it is time for reproduction, then they'll just pop out of their little spawner spot. And that is totally fine. Not quite as exciting as in Zoo Tycoon 2 where you can watch like the parent kind of settle down, get ready, have their baby. But that's okay because this is really fun still. Where on earth did it go? And there he is. So little baby Ocelot is now running off on its very first hunt. Who knows where? I just hope it'll do okay and it won't drown or be eaten by anything. And we'll have to check in on it. So there we go, you guys. Our little Fernville jungle is actually doing a lot better than I thought it would. So we'll seriously start spreading over to this area next time. Keeping an eye on these guys because they get extremely hungry extremely fast. And hopefully opening up a grasslands next time. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm loving how much you guys love this. Your joy and excitement just oh, makes me so happy. And I just can't wait to share more with you guys. So I'll see you all then. Bye-bye.